All right, I'm joined now by Brent from DSI Sportsbook for this week's version of the Odds Report. Brent, how's it going today, man? Uh, nothing nothing spells Christmas like a whole bunch of bowl games, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. That's how we know it's the holiday season here. And, of course, with Thursday being the first day of winter, you know, it means that we know that college football is unfortunately drawing to a close here. Games through January 1st of the national championship game, and then that'll be it. We'll pack college football away uh, for the next several months. But before we do that, lots of bowl games to get to here. And, Brent, we'll go ahead and dive right in, and we'll start with an early game here on Friday. And fortunately for our listeners, since the entire Friday show is pre-recorded Thursday night, we'll get this one out to you a little bit earlier here because we've got sharp action in the Bahamas Bowl between <laughs> UAB and Ohio, game 217-218 on the board. Yeah, and you know, we always talk about how it's never never a great thing when I got sharp money on the over of, of a game. And this is it, it's kind of a, a strange spot because I don't, you know, especially in bowl season, it's not often where I get to talk about how I've got more wagers favoring the under. Um, that, I'm, you know, it, it almost doesn't happen in these bowl games. People just love betting the over. And again, you get these teams who like to, to shoot it out. There's always these interesting matchups. But this is one of those weird spots where I actually have more public guys betting the under, which just kind of strikes me as, as a little bit odd. And I have sharp money on the over now. Um, my count just slightly favors the under, which is, again, just the fact that there's any under money is a bit of a surprise to me. But I do have sharp money on the over this one. Uh, they came in on the over uh, over 54 and a half. You know, it is one of those early games on Friday, Bahamas Bulls, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I'm, it's kind of an interesting game on paper, at least. I mean, you've got these teams that are, you know, spread six and a half Ohio favorite, of course. But it, it seems like it's going to be one of those games that sets up well. And the other game on Friday as well, Central Michigan, Wyoming, seems like a, a decent game as well. So, you know, it's kind of like dull games in terms of these aren't marquee teams. Teams, but games worth looking forward to. But uh, this one, over 54 and a half is where I got the sharp action, Adam. So this is an interesting game because the total actually opened higher than 54 and a half, came down initially, and then got hammered back up. So uh, was that just early public investment, some pseudo sharp action on the opener? Uh, what, what, what was the catalyst behind that early move down? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that because I was looking at it as well. I, I often, you know, look at the flow of the lines as well, and just not often that you see um, sharps going one way. That yet the early action is the other way. But I guess this is just one of those games where the public decided early that you know they they like the under on this one. It did open at 57, went straight down to 56, um, and then they obviously got to the point of 54 and a half where the sharp said, you know, I got to grab me some of that. So uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those interesting spots. And as you said, like the early movement, um, generally you expect the public to bet overs. So you expect the early line move to go up and the sharps to grab the under. This one kind of set up, you know, just the exact opposite, which rare, rarely, rarely happens. All right, well, we got sharp action on the other college football bowl game here on Friday. This one's the famous Idaho Potato Bowl, 219-220 between Central Michigan and Wyoming. Sharp action that's probably not going to be a surprise to too many of our listeners out there. Yeah, it's interesting, this one, that the famous Idaho Potato Bowl, and it's like, it's not that it's famous, but it's just that famous is actually in the title of this game. So it's kind of one of those funny ones, the old potato bowl. But uh, yeah, I guess no surprise here in terms of the, the sharp action being on Wyoming. And also, if you kind of look at the line movement, um, you know, there were our places that opened up as a pick on this one. Uh, I did open up one. We actually got sharp action on Wyoming at one and a half. So we're not in as bad of a spot in terms of the action didn't come at a pick um, where the early, early numbers came. But of course, uh, quarterback Josh Allen is upgraded to probable in this one. So he's definitely going to, you know, he could be pretty sure he's going to play. And that's, you know, that's part of the line movement. But, um, you know, I've got guys who play moves just for the sake of moves and guys who play, you know, sharp guys who play the winning side. And this is the case where I got, a, you know, a guy who's a sharp long-term winner, not kind of one of those guys who's going to go, go out in arbitrage at all, who's on Wyoming, uh, minus one and a half versus Central Michigan. Well, of course, that Josh Allen thing, you know, you can kind of speculate a little bit on that too in terms of if he's going to play or not. We talked about that on Thursday's show with regards to the Cactus Bowl with Kansas State and and UCLA, and we'll touch on sharp action in that game here uh, briefly in a couple of minutes. But that's one where if you wanted to speculate on whether or not Josh Rosen was going to play, not necessarily the worst thing in the world to do to take a Kansas State ticket, because if Josh Rosen doesn't play, that number looks a hell of a lot different than where you got it. So, you know, somebody probably out there looking at Wyoming as a speculatory play as well, Uh, not necessarily this, this particular individual sharp guy, uh, but, you know, some people out there probably did go that route with this game. And it does seem that they've been rewarded with a little bit of line value there in that one. So let's go uh, look ahead to Saturday here. The first game on Saturday, Texas Tech and South Florida in the Birmingham Bowl game, 221-222. What's the sharp involvement here, Brent? 
Yeah, I just want to touch on Adam. There's one thing, you know, an interesting point you mentioned with kind of being speculative um, at this time of the year too, especially with the NFL season. Just something to look for is that we do have guys who who are sharp who do the same sort of thing with respect to totals. Um, they'll look at weather situations and whether they're expecting bad weather, but it's not maybe officially released, you know, that it's going to be bad weather in a certain spot. Now, um, those cases, maybe they can, you know, if, if weather doesn't affect the total, they can get off a game, game and say maybe maybe they the 110 each way and kind of say, okay, I, you know, I'm off the hook with minus 110. But when it works out in their favor, they're talking about totals that can drop from, you know, you know a 47 and a half down to a 41 or something like that. So um, it puts them in a very advantageous spot. But yeah, I mean, this Wyoming situation isn't one of those spots, but it is definitely, you know, you can find some value in total as well, especially the late in the season in terms of uh, the, the weather situation. So uh, on to the 23rd uh, Saturday with, <coughs> excuse me, with the uh, the Birmingham Bowl. Uh, sharp action on this one on the total as well. Um, this time I do have what you expect with Texas Tech and South Florida involved. I have a heavy count, heavy, heavy one way in terms of the uh, the over action on this one, and I actually got sharp action on the under. So now this total did open uh, quite low, and I got bet up all the way up to well, we were at 68 when I got sharp action on the under. So uh, this Texas Tech South Florida game under 68 is where I got sharp money, but my wager count favoring the over is almost eight to one. So you know we didn't get hit too bad in terms of the creeping up, the, you know the line moves slowly slowly so we're not really exposed in terms of, a, of this total at all but interesting where you've got so much action on the over public money all on the over on this one and sharp action the other way well and this is one of those cases that we've talked about here throughout the bowl season is that you had those initial hits of guys grabbing numbers and then you just had people waiting on these games they didn't want to tie anything up with the nfl still going on college basketball the nba nhl etc so this is one that you want to watch on saturday particularly saturday morning because we've seen so many significant game day moves, if this is a total that moves down again, you got a good idea of what happened. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that's you know, people often are under the kind of misconception that you know sharps go the same way. But there's you know, I, I would say I've got about you know five or six guys who I, I put on a list. Um, that list was a little bit bigger before, but I mean, it doesn't mean that those guys are going to agree the same games and go the same way and stuff like that. And most often, once the value's out of a game, you get to a point where, especially in the case where you know you're betting a total and the public's going all over, you can drive a number up. Um, you know, a sharp guy might get an early number, say just hypothetically, say you went over 64, number gets up gets bet up easily to like the 70s another sharp guy might might come the other way all right well we got another game here on saturday that's the dollar general bowl this one game 225 226 appalachian state taking on toledo good little group of five game here some sharp involvement on one of the sides yeah, it's funny these these game these these bull names. The Dollar General Bull. It's like they run out of names. Uh, uh, this one, yeah, I do have sharp action on this one, and it's a, a decent spot for us in terms of I've got uh, App State money and I got public money on the on Toledo. Uh, Toledo, of course, eleven and two, perhaps a more impressive record, but eight and four. App State got the got the support from the sharps here. Uh, they came in on App State at plus seven, uh, so probably plus seven and a half. Right now we're at seven uh, dog fifteen, so they got the half point down to the key number, and also you know the extra five cents juice there on app state all right well we just want to touch on uh, some of the games that we've previously talked about here if you've missed some of these past segments again like i said we're seeing a lot of game day movement and, and maybe within 48 hours of the game but other than that you know, we're not seeing a ton right now with so many other betting options on the board but kansas state pick em was a sharp play uh back when i think i don't know if it was last week or two weeks ago when we were on the air missouri minus one and a half louisville minus five lsu minus two Georgia as a pick 'em and Alabama as a pick 'em as well. Those were some of the sharp sides that we've talked about in the past. Brent, any notable movement on any of those that you want to touch on here as an update this week? Yeah, I'm really not a whole lot. I mean, I had uh, you know Kansas State was a, a wager count almost uh, three to one favoring them when we talked about it just on the call. Um, that line had gone from a pick to uh, to minus two at the time. Um, we're at like up to two and a half minus one fifteen now. So it's just kind of a se- steady stream that one way with Kansas. Um, my wager count still is around it's actually around five to one now. So the money keeps coming Kansas State way. The lines basically. I mean, I don't have any sharps involved since the pick. I mean, they grabbed that, but it's interesting to note that the lines kind of crept up because the public is on the same side as well so this one keeps on keeps on going up 
Uh, Missouri, Texas, yeah, we talked about that one with the, the minus one and a half. Now, again, this is kind of you watch the ebb and flow of lines sometimes, and you see how they move and why they move where they go. Um, this one was bet uh, with uh, Missouri to minus one and a half, and when, when we talked about this two weeks ago, that line had gone all the way up to three. Now, at three, you know, you start to find value where maybe, you know, pseudo sharp or a sharp guy may come the other way. Now, that line has dropped from the three back down to two and a half, so, you know, when you hit a key number, that's when you, you know, if sharps are kind of circling, that's kind of like those numbers where they're going to pounce on um, now again i didn't get 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 bet here at texas plus three but i imagine somewhere out in the market a sharp guy might have played that out of the way now can you take that to the bank no i don't know that per se but you know that's one of those things where you get a hit at minus one and a half he's sitting on three three minus 115 and then it comes back the other way it's probably sharp money that drove it back the other way um i mentioned that as well just because the wager count's pretty much even on this one so it's not like public money is going to be coming back the other way or that you know public money is going to be the cause of that line move because we're so balanced on this one um not a whole lot of movement on on these other numbers as well. I mean, we talked about the you know LSU minus two, uh, you know uh, Louisville minus five as well. My wager counts are all pretty much the same in terms of uh, the one-sided action that I have on those games. And again, you know Louisville is kind of like one of those runaway games right now in terms of my count. It was like eight to one at the time, and we're still eight to one at Louisville. Uh, there's six and a half and seven out there. Uh, sharp money came in at the the minus five that we previously talked about. Um, LSU, the same thing. It just kind of keeps on keeps on creeping up that number. Um, the sharp money came in at minus two, as we talked about uh, when we did the show. It was minus three, minus uh, 115, I think it was, or minus three flat. And we're up to three and a half, dog 15 right now as well. So that money keeps going the same way in terms of LSU's favor. My wager count's only about two to one, you know, favoring LSU. So it's not a dramatic uh, one-sided shift in terms of the action all one way. And again, typically when Notre Dame's involved, you do find some public money the other way. So we do have some support for them. But again, the line's gone from two to three when we did this show previously, all the way up to three and a half, dog 15 right now. And uh, George, the Georgia game and Alabama game, of course, both those were sharp plays at a pick em. Uh We're up to minus two on Georgia, minus three on Alabama. Uh, my count actually favors Alabama uh, almost like uh, two, almost three to one. So it's just definitely the sharp money the one way with Georgia, yet the public is going the other way, as we previously had talked about. And same thing with Alabama. I got uh, wager count almost, uh, almost two and a half to one favoring Clemson. So I got public money on both the dogs now and sharp money was on the on the two fa- well the two teams who were a pick at the time and who were now the favorites last thing i'll ask about with college football and then we'll transition away here uh, there's one game on thursday night and that will be done by the time listeners hear this show so eight bowl games will be complete but by the time this segment plays tomorrow morning uh, has the action been what you expected has it been higher than projections lower than projections what do you think it's been, I mean, it always varies on, on the, on the, you know, the game and what else is on at the time. Um, you know, like that Akron, uh, Ford Atlanta game, for example, wasn't one of the, you know, the heaviest bet games of the, you know, the bowl season, as you maybe would expect, but, uh, Oregon Boise state, for example, was a, you know, a real heavily bet game for us. Um, interesting too, about the, you know, the totals that we talked about previously, it seemed like, you know, every game had been beat had been bet over by the public but uh the sharps were on the army navy under game and that turned out well for them they had the uh the oregon state uh oregon sorry oregon boise state game over um that cash for them they won the the marshall colorado state game over they won with that as well and the only loss so far really was the uh, akron florida uh, fort atlantic game the other night where it actually went under even though fort atlantic scored 50 points so um pretty impressive so far in terms of the sharps with nailing these totals yeah and i, I kind of wonder if that may be a thing going forward, if we see more sharp people, I know that there are sharp people out there that that specifically specialize in totals, but as we've talked about on this show a lot here, you know, the numbers are just getting tighter. The full game numbers are so much tighter now, especially from a side standpoint. That's why you see a lot of derivative betting, a lot of live <laughs> betting. I wonder if totals are something where, you know, there's just still a higher level of variance and volatility to a total relative to a spread. I do wonder if maybe we see sharp bettors start to focus even more on totals, you know, in, in the football betting market going forward. Yeah, I, I think in, in bowl season, we, I mean, we definitely see more sharp action, I think, involved in totals than, than we do throughout the regular season. That would be a fair statement. All right, let's go over to the NFL side here and touch on week 16. And an interesting week, as you heard about in the previous Super Contest segment there, where, you know, I've got a few <laughs> plays that I like, but overall, just a lot of questions on this card which favorites will show up, which dogs will show up, who will quit. There's a lot of different considerations here this week. But sharp betters out there picking off value, as they always do. Beginning with Sunday here, game 105-106, the Detroit Lions take on the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals look like a team that has quit at this point here, Brent. Are the sharp guys agreeing with that sentiment? Yeah, I mean – 
you hate to say, you know, talk about a team quitting and you know, the talk about the coach leaving and all that kind of stuff, but it, it does, you know, they don't look like a very motivated team right now. You and then you expect, you know, they're, they're professionally going to play it out and kind of stuff like that. But um, you, it's they just don't seem like the you know the same team they did last week. Now they've lost three games in a row, and lo and behold, here we are in a spot where I had Detroit go from uh, three and a half to minus five or, or four and a half where we are right now. Um, I'm sitting at five. Other mar- people out in the market are minus four, but I've got you know I've got public money uh, about two to one in favor of Detroit, and I have sharp money that came in at the minus three and a half. So. It's a you know it's a bit of a tough spot for us because it's a game obviously you know you always you, you like to think that every team's going to go out and give give their all and stuff like that and Detroit definitely you know needs to win this game or wants to win this game or whatever you know the, the case just might not be the same in terms of the other side with Cincinnati now you figure okay you know they're going to be professional and put their best foot forward so you know and I think too like one of those misconceptions that sometimes people get caught up in. Uh, you know, specifically with this game is when they talk about, you know, one team versus another team, you know, it's a must win game for them. Um, We talked, we saw that, uh, I guess it was last week. It was, (coughs) excuse me. And there was, you know, people just, just generally people were talking about games with, uh, with the Seattle and and LA Rams game where it was like, you know, talking about Seattle in terms of this is a game that they had to win. It was like one of those must win games for them. And, you know, it kind of, you know, suggests that the Rams aren't going to go and try to win the game, that game themselves. And it's just like, no, you're missing the point here. The other team wants to win the game too. Don't get caught up in one side must win or, or needs to win. I mean, obviously, we all saw what happened in that game. It was an absolute blowout for the Rams. Not what you expected at all in terms of the line movement and stuff like that. But, you know, I think people get lost in the fact that the Rams kind of wanted to win that game too. So uh, don't get up, get caught up in these must win situations. Yeah, and that's got to be challenging being out there and, and putting up numbers and monitoring these numbers is that, you know, as we just talked about, it looks like the Bengals have quit, but you have to leave that up to the betters to decide. You can't really, I mean, I guess you could shade a line a half point or maybe a little bit of juice, just expecting that you're going to get Detroit money because that sentiment is very popular out there, but it's not like you can put out a number you know, that's intentionally too high thinking Cincinnati's quit because then you expose yourself. You have to leave that up to your clientele. And, and that has to be a little bit of an uncomfortable feeling. Yeah, it, it is tough. I mean, we talk about even even early in the season with, with certain games and certain teams, it's because you kind of know where the public's going to bet. But I mean, if you put any number just a little bit too high, the Sharps find value. You know, the Sharps are always finding value in these, these you know, quote unquote, bad teams. And you don't want to say, OK, they're a bad team or they're not a bad team. Well, I mean, you, it might be safe to say that Cleveland's a bad team. I don't want to, you know, you know. You know, oh, they are. Anyone saying, saying there's no bad teams in the NFL. Obviously, there are bad teams or teams that are certainly better than others. But, I mean, those are the teams where, yeah, you could stick up a higher number and you get all one-sided action the other way with public betters. But if you have sharp betters in your store who you use to, you know, to your advantage, you, you, you can't do that because you're at risk at taking max bets the other way. All right, let's go down to game 109-110 here. The L.A. Rams make the trip out to the Music City. They take on the Tennessee Titans, who, despite last week's loss <clears> to the 49ers, and that could be a particularly crippling loss for them, they would be in the playoffs if the playoffs started before week 16. So a lot still on the line here for the Titans. What's the sharp side in this one? Yeah, I mean, Tennessee has – I mean, they have lost a couple of games in a row now, uh, but they are sitting at 8-6, and six, and it, it's definitely, you know, a, you know a, a big game for them in terms of, you know, must win, having to win, all that kind of stuff. Um, I do have a sharp action on this game, and, you know, it, it's – you know – I, it's tough. I mean, the Rams look so good sometimes, and obviously they looked so good last week as well. Um, you don't ever want to suggest that maybe there's going to be a you know a look ahead spot or, or a letdown spot. But I mean, that game must have been so big for the Rams team last week at Seattle. Um, here they are, kind of you know with Tennessee at Tennessee and then San Francisco to close out the season. It was kind of like that game versus Seattle was kind of like the all or nothing for them. And, you know, maybe there's going to be an emotional letdown. I don't know, but I do have sharp action on the home dog Tennessee in this one. Uh, they took the Titans at plus seven, minus one. Um, right now we're sitting at plus seven minus 120 so we're still sitting on the number seven and that's more so because I've just got so much public action the other way on the Rams now again I've had public money on the Rams for I mean since I was going to say since Jesus was a boy it's been it's been all season long pretty well since the Rams started out as well as they did and the public's just been on ever since um, my wager count right now is about four to one favoring the Rams but more money and sharp action on Tennessee All right, let's go to a game that uh, doesn't really have any implications one way or another. That's game 117-118. Denver takes on Washington. The Redskins, a three-point favorite with extra juice or a a three-and-a-half-point favorite out there in the marketplace, but it's the total that's drawn (coughs) sharp investment there at DSI. Yeah, again, not the, not one of the best games involving the best teams or anything like that, but you've got Denver with, uh, you know, it's funny with their quarterback, Osweiler, like, 
it seems when you look at him out there with Denver, it's like Denver is like the only team he can play quarterback for. Cause he, I mean, he doesn't look awful out there. Um, and anyhow, in this one, I do have sharp action on the total. Um, we've got under money on this one. Under 42 is where I took sharp action on this one, Adam. Uh, we're sitting at 40 and a half right now. Uh, my, my count's almost dead even on this one, so I don't have you know a wave of public money on the over on this one, which you kind of assume in terms of Denver's strong defense and that the offense not being uh, you know being all that much. Uh, but uh, So my count, basically dead even in terms of the number individual number of bets I've taken on this one on the total but sharp action under 42 as I mentioned we're sitting at 40 and a half right now all right we'll keep this train rolling here because we got a couple of interesting games to finish up this segment with one that means something one that means absolutely nothing Jacksonville takes on San Francisco here game 123 124 Jaguars with some playoff scenarios in play for this one San Francisco not much in play but they have won three straight and they're Riding a little bit of a hot streak here with Jimmy Garoppolo. Test, though, for Jimmy G, taking out a real defense for the first time with Jacksonville coming out west. Uh, what's the sharp story here? Yeah, this is, this is one of the interesting ones. I mean, and, and again, too, um, you know, Jacksonville does close things out with Tennessee, at Tennessee, but here they've got San Francisco. And you kind of think, well, like the, the lonely San Francisco 49ers, but all of a sudden, you, you know, you look down, and you're like, well, they're 4-10. and 10, And you can remember just back when they were, you know, I guess 1-10. and 10, Now they've won three in a row. And Garoppolo, I mean – to be quite honest, he's, he's looked pretty good. His numbers are pretty good. And he, you know, did the whole, you know, the whole team plays better, I guess, with him out there. Um, you know, again, they're probably kicking themselves in terms of the draft position and how they're ruining that. But I mean, heck, he's going out there trying to win and he's, you know, he's won three games in a row, kind of impressive for San Francisco. Um, as you'll note, this line has dropped down. Now, uh, I think out there in the market, the opening, opening number was like Jacksonville minus five and a half. Now uh, we went with, uh, with five or four and a half when I opened up and I did get sharp action on, on San Francisco at that time. Plus, Plus four and a half, minus 105. Uh, we're down to four flat right now. So it's been quite a, you know, if you'd gotten in on the initial move, uh, initial opening number with Jacksonville minus five and a half, that's quite a drop down, down to the four where we are right now. Uh, four and a half, minus 05 is where I got that sharp back into. And it's one of those interesting two things too when you look at the, you know, the urgent messages, messages and injuries on this game. Um, you know, the running back for Jacksonville Fournette, I mean, he's, he's, he's upgraded. He's scheduled to play. So it's like he's going to be in there and the line still drops. You know, that was sharp action that went that way. And of course, um, you know, probably no surprise. I'm going to tell you that I have a wager count almost four to one favoring Jacksonville. So uh, public going one way, sharps the other way. And I got sharp action on San Francisco. I am a little bit surprised to hear the public count is that lopsided because I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo is gaining steam. And for Jacksonville here, you know, the, the public has gotten a lot smarter. They understand a lot of these scenarios about cross country travel. And for Jacksonville here, back to back road games to end the year. Week 16, you got to go out to San Francisco. You're, you're already tired. You're going to be playing in the playoffs for the first time in you know, forever for a lot of these guys, or sometimes the first time ever for them. I'm a little bit surprised to hear that it's so lopsided at 4-1. to Yeah, no, me too. I mean... <laughs> As you said, I mean, people are a lot more educated on these things and talking about the trips and stuff like that and even schedule spots. You see people look at stuff like that. Um, Jacksonville, you know, they they do have a, you know, a playoff spot locked up. Now, where they finish is is still to be decided. So, you know, it is one of those games that they do need to win, and that could be, you know, one of the driving factors behind the public money still on Jacksonville. But, yeah, I mean, in previous weeks, I I had nothing but public money on on San Francisco because of, you know, the quarterback situation, as you alluded to. But not in this case. They're just all over Jacksonville still. Like I said, 4-1. to That's that's, that's you know quite a strong count for us in the NFL. One more game to look at here. This game means absolutely nothing, but you know sharp guys finding value, and that's just the way it goes here. Game one twenty five, one twenty six. The New York Giants take on the Arizona Cardinals. I, I think it says something that this line moved down with the announcement that Drew Stanton would be starting at quarterback over Blaine Gabbert. Probably not a ringing endorsement for Drew Stanton. <coughs> No, yeah, and you mentioned this is probably not one of the, the market games on the week, and, you know, even like the, for the 3 o'clock games, there's there's only three games going on at that time, and even though with only three of those on, probably no one's going to want to watch this one. You've got Jacksonville, San Francisco, Giants, Arizona, and the Seattle-Dallas game. This is probably the, the least-watched game of that bunch, um, but I do, you know, sharp action comes wherever it comes, and, you know, perhaps no surprise that the, the sharp money is on, on the Giants, uh, plus 4.5 now. Uh, they've kind of picked their spots with the Giants this year in terms of the sharps going with them, um, I haven't seen a whole whole lot of games where people are going, you know, despite how bad the Giants were this year, 
not many spots where you saw sharp action going against them, but there's you know quite a few spots that we've talked about where the sharps have been on the Giants. Uh, plus four and a half is where they have uh, the Giants on this one. We're down to like three and a half dog 15 with Arizona as the home favorite. So uh, you know Giants traveling out to Arizona, but still they got uh, they've got ac- sharp action on the Giants. And you know my wager count isn't like crazy one-sided either way. Like I don't have a ton of volume you know wager on this game at all, but I do have a wager count that favors Arizona about two to one. So you know the public's still going with the home favorite in this case. Well, Brent, always a treat to chat with you, man. Feliz Navidad. Happy holidays to you and yours down there, and uh, we'll talk to you again next week. Awesome, Adam. Have a great weekend.